One genre of roguelites seems to produce more games than any other, and in the past, I've said it has a lot more quantity over quality, but as a whole, the genre still has some of the best games you can play. And this genre is the Horde Survivor, or Bullet Heaven, or Vampire Survivors Inspired Clone. Vampire Survivors is a game where you have a starting character with a starting weapon, and you try to survive for 30 minutes on a level, and you gain XP for killing enemies, and every level you can upgrade a weapon or secondary skill like attack speed, movement speed, the usual buffs that you get. That's the main gist of the game, and it found massive success in early access, and really, Vampire Survivors has added a lot, which we will talk about later. But the success of Vampire Survivors has spawned a slew of games, and I wanted to quickly review every single one of these games that I have played and put them in a tier list. The four categories would be great, good, bad, and then a game that has some potential with some updates. Now, I'm not a game developer, and if you told me to make a game like this, I wouldn't know where to start. But I do feel this type of game is a good stepping stone towards better things and great practice for a developer. And hell, if you make a great game in this genre, it could lead to great success. And I'll also say, I haven't played the most amount of games in this genre. Really, this genre is never ending. But I feel like the games that I have played, it's a good amount, and it'll be good to tell you if they're good, bad, or great. So really, let's get into it. We can start this list off with one of the more popular Horde survivors, and it's 20 minutes till dawn. It was released out of Early Access on June 8th, 2023, and like every game on this list, you kill enemies an X amount of time and level up throughout the run, upgrading your weapons and yourself. I'll say, inside a run in this game has summons, which can also be upgraded, and personally, the only time I have a good run is when I focus on summon. The amount of variety in a run is good, and outside of a run, you have 13 different starting characters, some which you unlock with the darkness currency you receive after a run, and a couple you unlock after clearing a map. And the same goes for starting weapon. Each character has their own uniqueness to them, but you can pick which starting weapon to use, and just like the characters, you unlock them with the darkness currency. That's what I'm calling it. And finally, the game has meta progression with runes. There are multiple different rows of runes, and you can equip one rune in each row to help buff different areas in every run. I think this is a good horde survivor. Not great in my eyes, as there's only three maps and the difficulty enhancers aren't anything too crazy, but like all games on this list, it's cheap and you'll easily get your money's worth if you play this one. So it's at the top of good, and that means you should probably play it. Next, we have Army of Ruin, which is a game that I've had in my library for a while, but never really got around to it. It was released out of Early Access on June 8th, and this game has a lot more than I expected. Right off the bat with unlocks, there are 24 characters with so many weapons and trinkets, and even gameplay changes to unlock with difficulty enhancers, and extra weapons and extra ability upgrades. The meta progression is simple, where the gold you earn at the end of a run is used to permanently buff all your characters. And now for the map, to keep replayability high, we have five maps total, all with three different base difficulties, where the time to survive is increased for each one, and that doesn't include the more difficulty enhancers that you can unlock. Overall, I was impressed with this game, mostly with the great variety in weapons and characters. I'm also not a big fan of runs being 30 minutes, as I feel 20 minutes is the perfect length of runs for this game. Now, I still wouldn't say Army of Ruin is great, as I'm pretty stingy with great choices, but this is a really good horde survivor, probably right up there of 20 minutes till dawn. Now we have a unique retro style Horde Survivor, and it's Blood Dome 99. It released into Early Access December 4th, 2023, and the core gameplay is like any other. You kill bad guys and level up your guns and yourself while gaining XP. But to win a run, you need to earn $300,000 instead of surviving X amount of time. Now, as of making this, the game is still very new, so it doesn't have too much, but from what I've seen, you have three starting weapons and a handful of perks and new weapons to unlock after each run. Outside of that, there isn't any meta progression via buffs, but that's fine. According to the Steam page, they're gonna add meta progression when it fully releases, so we'll see. The graphics may turn some people away, but this is a simple game that's like three bucks. I'm putting it in the has potential category, as I feel this game could be great, but it most likely will be good. But I guess we'll see as time goes on. Now we have Brotato. I've made a whole video talking about this game, but I'll quickly discuss it again. Brotato released out of early access on June 23rd, and you can play it anywhere. This game is simple as it has one map, but the amount of variety available to you, the player, is incredible. Every game feels fresh as the game offers 44 different playable characters, all with different starting weapons and abilities, and inside a run, the amount of items to gain buffs for your character is insane. It truly is one of the best horde survivors you can play, and I think it's better than great, but it will settle at the top. Okay, this next horde survivor, I feel like some people may view it as a joke, but it's honestly not that bad. 
and it's Choo Choo Survivors. It was released June 26th, and you play as a train in this one, and your goal is to make it to the end of the track while fighting off hordes of enemies. The game has multiple different trains, all with different stats, with each train being able to hold a certain amount of guns. The different amount of trains is nice, and the meta progression isn't too bad as it makes the game kinda easy once you're a few hours in, but all the levels do have a hard mode, and you probably wouldn't play this game as much as others, but for $3, it's a good time, and I really could not call this game bad, so it's at the bottom of the good tier. Now we have one of the more popular Horde survivors to come out as of late, and it's Death Must Die. It released into early access on November 14th, and this one has you kill death to win a run. But as of making this video, a run only lasts 20 minutes, and you win when you kill Dracula. And I personally wasn't too fond of this game compared to others, but I do like what I see. There's only one map, but five playable characters, all with different start and buffs you can unlock, and you can even hold items to give you even more buffs. And of course, each character is stronger in different areas. The game also includes some difficulty enhancers, but I felt done with the game once I cleared a few runs. But I'll pick it up again once more content is added. So as of now, I'd say this game has some very good potential to be something special. Next, we have Fabric of Reality, which released December 14th of 2022. And this game reminded me more of an open world Galica, which is both good and bad. That, I'd say. The main core of the game is surviving 100 waves of enemies, and every level up you get a new bullet card, which makes the bullets shoot different. But you can also discard your level up cards for a buff that lasts the entire run. And every card can be upgraded after doing a certain number of damage. And I'll say that part is nice, and the ginormous skill tree is also good. What really made me not enjoy this game was the replayability and the length of a run. 100 waves just felt way too long for me to be invested in a game that reminds me of a classic arcade game from 1981. I felt no urge to replay the game nor finish a run. It's not a horrible first game for the dev, but it didn't keep my attention and for that, it's at the top of bad. But you might like it, you never know. Maybe shorter runs is what it needs. Next is a game that most reminds me of Rotato and it's God of Weapons. It was released September 12th of 2023 and this game is actually insane with how much it has. Runs are set up like Rotato where you survive for 20 waves with each wave increasing in time and difficulty and you receive upgrades between waves. But the way the upgrades work is an inventory management system and and you unlock more inventory slots after each wave. And then you buy items that have a certain inventory pattern that can fit in your inventory. You need to organize it the best way you can. That system reminds me of Resident Evil 4, of course, and Backpack Battles. But for a horde survivor like this, I feel it works incredibly well. Outside of runs, you have tons of characters, all with different start and aspects, weapons, and items. And you have difficulty enhancers and a meta progression for permanent buffs and unlocking new items. I'll say the unlock method for items and buffs use the same currency, so that may get grindy, but from my short time of this game, I love almost everything I see. The floors are a little small, so it can be hard to maneuver, and the soundtrack isn't anything special, but the core gameplay and progression is something I love, and honestly, I'm gonna say this is a great Horde Survivor game. Next is one game I've heard constant praise for, and it's Goobies. It was released July 14th of 2023, and this is the most pleasing Horde Survivor in terms of graphics, along with Brotato, but I feel this game doesn't do anything special. For me, the runs felt slow, along with the meta progression and the upgrades did not feel good in the run. You play as a blob and you can unlock different blobs to play as, but the core of a run just does not feel good to me. The gameplay got a little tedious and wasn't engaging at all. I've heard people love this game, but I feel it was not for me and I think it's more so a bad game than good. Sorry, Goobies. Next is Gunsu Guardians, which was released into early access on March 31st, 2023. I like this game, but it's quite basic, I would say. You survive for 20 waves with a boss spawn in every five waves, but enemy and boss models never change throughout a run, nor does the background ever really change, so every run feels the same. You have meta progression to upgrade all your basic stats and can unlock different suits with different starting buffs, along with different starting weapons. But every run feels interchangeable, and after a few runs, it can be kind of tedious. But I won't say it's bad because that run I do have, I do feel engaged when I do play this game in about one hour spurts randomly, but whenever new content is dropped, I always end up playing it for a little bit. But I'm going to put it right in the middle with has some potential because I feel like it could evolve, but it might end up a little tedious but it's still a good time overall. Now we have Halftime Heroes, which was released on May 11th, 2023. This game is another 3D style horde survivor, but like Gunsuit Guardians, the enemies never change, and the runs are so monotonous. Well, 
The one run I did was monotonous as I never needed to even do anything until level 50 as the game didn't pose a single challenge and I unlocked every achievement in 25 minutes. The only positive thing this game had was being able to create a character and even then it doesn't affect a run at all. Maybe by playing the game more you can unlock more challenges and more in-depth variety with character creation, but why in the world would you want to do that if the beginning of the game isn't engaging or fun? It's had zero updates since it was released and this is the worst Horde Survivor I've ever played. Maybe one of the worst games I've ever played. I'd put it in its own category if I could, but this game was just bad. All right, now on to something actually good. We have Halls of Torment, and it was released in the early access on May 24th, 2023, and this game is awesome. It plays similar to Death Must Die, but your end goal is surviving 30 minutes in one of the five levels. Each level is filled with secrets, and you have a lot of items that you can unlock and send up to the hub world to buy and use in future runs, just like Death Must Die. And just like Death Must Die, you equip the items before a run and have that buff for the entire run. You have seven different playable characters, all who specialize in different areas, and the meta progression is simple where you spend gold outside of a run on permanent buffs. One big thing they added recently was the difficulty enhancer called Glory that determines the difficulty based on how you're playing in the run. If you start getting hit a lot, then the difficulty will slowly go down compared to dominating the run and having it go up. I think that is the most unique difficulty enhancer out of all the Horde survivors, and I do like that a lot. Really, this game may be an early access, but I think it's one of the best Horde survivor games you can play, and it's going in the great category for sure. Now we have a Horde survivor I never thought I'd play, and it's hard. Hollow Cure. It was released August 18th, 2023, and you play as your favorite VTubers and survive for X amount of time like any of these games. The premise of this, you'd think it's a joke, but this game is actually incredibly in depth for what it is. Lots of characters to unlock, great meta progression outside of a run, lots of fun and unique upgrades you get inside of a run, and the best part is, this game is free. I need to play more of it to be honest, but from what I've seen, this is actually a great game, and it being free is a great benefit. I'm gonna only put it in the good tier though, at the top of good tier, because it's not really a hundred. 100% my style of a game, but it's a free game, so you don't really lose anything by playing it. You gotta give it a try. Next, we have Orc Survivor, and it was released on December 1st, 2023, and this game reminded me a lot of Vampire Survivors, but it stands out initially for me with meta progression on your weapons and character. You have your buffs you unlock with gold, but all of your weapons can be modded as well. Runs as a whole aren't too long, and I was able to get a pretty powerful run early on, but notice I had to mainly focus on one weapon immediately for that to happen. But the game does offer some difficulty enhancers to make it harder. It doesn't do anything super crazy compared to other Horde survivors as it plays a lot like Vampire Survivors, but that doesn't mean it's bad. I enjoyed my winning run in the game and want to dive back into it when I can, but for how new the game is and with it being early access, I'm going to say it has some potential to be a fun game, so we'll see how it turns out. Next we have Pathfinder Gallowspire's Survivors, which was released on September 14th, 2023, and this game is a little interesting, I'd say. The inside of a run is kind of like God of Weapons where you go through floors, but you need to get X amount of kills before moving on to the next floor. I'm not sure how many floors consist of a run and that's because this game felt a little unfair. The main unique thing about this game is that you have a second character who follows you and can get upgrades with weapons and passives, but the amount of times you get upgrades to them is so inconsistent compared to your main character, and they felt useless. And on top of that, the upgrades felt minuscule compared to how hard the enemies become. And the same thing goes for the meta progression where the amount it costs just felt minuscule. I'll say the progression is nice as every character has their own skill tree, and then there's cards you unlock in a run that help enemies become ever so slightly weaker, but the negatives really hold this game back. I'd say fine tune some enemies, remove the second character, and make buffs more impactful, and you got some great potential. But as of now, I'm saying this is a bad game to me. Next, we have Slime 3K Rise Against Despot, and it was released in the early access on November 2nd, 2023. I actually played the demo of this game during a Steam Next Fest, and I enjoyed what I saw, so I was excited to re-explore it for this video. It's a pretty simple time. The game has nine levels total as of making this video, and each level gets longer and harder. Inside the levels, you kill enemies and collect a ton of dropped items that speed you up, heal you, kill some enemies, give you a shield, and most importantly, buy cards which act as your abilities. You're able to hold seven abilities total and store four extra in your inventory. Every ability can also be upgraded to level three, and to do that, you need three level one cards and then three level two cards. The runs can get insane, but they are super fast at first. The game gives you a lot of dropped items, and one other item is the current 
currency for meta progression. After a run, you gain XP, which only allows you to unlock new abilities, aka cards. And the game has a good amount of cards for early access. And that's all really. Nine levels, 61 cards, all with different abilities, and some pretty good expensive meta progression. All for like two bucks. It's a good deal for sure. And with that, I'm not going to say it's great or good, but it has a lot of potential, and I'm curious on what will be added next. Next, we have Soulstone Survivors, which was released into early access on November 7th of 2022. And this game is just wow. The run setup is like any other Horde Survivor. Kill enemies, get XP, level up, and get some big buffs. But the clearing factor is killing five bosses that all spawn separately after killing a certain number of enemies. And I'd say this game is very easy to get a busted run. So your run can end in like 12 minutes, maybe even 10. But you can go to an endless mode or a hell mode to continue gaining more XP. And honestly, that's pretty fun. But outside of a run, this game shines so bright. It has tons of different currencies, all which you get from killing bosses. And they're all used to unlock and upgrade characters and upgrade the skill tree. And once the skill tree is fully done, every character has their own skill tree of upgrades. And on top of that, the game has insane difficulty enhancers. This game is so impressive for how much you can get. I do hear that the end game content can be pretty horrible and grindy on higher difficulties, but I've played for about 15 hours and still have so much to unlock, and I think this is a great horde survivor. One you must play if you're really into this genre. And now we have the catalyst of this genre with Vampire Survivors, which was released on October 12th, 2022. And what can't I say about this game? This game has added so many starting characters, all with different starting weapons, so many maps with enhancers, and a hyper mode to speed up the game, which I love, and just so many secrets to unlock. At first, I was not the biggest fan of Vampire Survivors, and I'm still not. But replaying the game again after playing all of these games reminds me of how truly great this game is. The great variety that every run can offer and the fact that every weapon and passive can be so strong is incredible. On top of that, the game is even adding an adventure mode, which might be different from a Horde Survivor, but still cool to see, and even a collaboration with Among Us. This is a great Horde Survivor, not my favorite one, but it's a great one, and it gives you incredible value for your purchase. You need to play this game as it started this entire genre on its own. And those are all the Horde Survivors or Bullet Heaven games that I've played. I don't know what to call this genre. If you look at Steam, every single one of these games is described as an action roguelike, and I'll say, yeah, I guess you can describe it like that, but I do sometimes feel a little misled with the tag as basically every roguelite has that tag on it. Whatever you want to call this genre, it's an endless pile of content of some good, some bad, and some with some work to do. But one of the best things about it is how cheap most of these games are. And if a game isn't up to your standard, just refund it on Steam, as sometimes games show you all the content in 30 minutes. Looking at you, Halftime Heroes. But thanks Thanks for watching this video and I hope you found a new Horde Survivor to play. If I missed your favorite one, don't get mad at me, just tell me in the comments and I'll try to play it again in the future video. But yeah, thanks for watching and extra special shout out to the people that support me on Patreon still, it really means a lot. And yeah, that's all. I'll see you next time. <laughs>